According to the book of Genesis, the first humans lived in an earthly paradise. But man's natural state was no Eden. Instead, it consisted of grinding poverty punctuated by horrific violence terminated with an early death. Yet despite the progress since our caveman days, many think there's something inherently alienating or unfair or just plain wrong about the present. People longed for a return to tribal solidarity where we were all in it together. Our inner primitive cries out, there must be a better way. But there isn't. Look around. You're at the end of history. It's time to rethink human progress. Here's a thought experiment. Imagine an alien is assigned the task of observing the progress of humanity for the first 250,000 years of our existence, but it can only visit once every 10,000 years. On the first visit, it would see semi-hairless, upright, nomadic apes foraging and fighting for food. On the next visit, it would see the same thing, and again, and again, 23 times, over 230,000 years. But on the 24th visit, the alien would see that we stopped foraging and started farming. However, in some ways, humans were actually worse off. Our diet got worse and tedious, backbreaking labor filled our days. So still, life was poor, nasty, brutish, and short. But on the 25th visit, the alien's ship would probably be spotted by NORAD. So how did we get to the world of today? Well, it's a long story. But part of it is that after thousands of generations of trial and error, we discovered some best practices. But we also discovered or stumbled into what I call the miracle, which was a revolution in our understanding of ourselves. For the first time, the individual was sovereign. Innovation was honored. Our rights came from God, not from government. This revolution in attitude transformed the human condition. It unleashed this explosion of wealth. With more time, more money in our pockets, and a culture that rewarded innovation and invention, people's lives were no longer poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Food improved, diet improved, health improved, access to electricity went up, literacy skyrocketed, as did life expectancy, population above extreme poverty, food supply, vaccination rates, GDP, you name it. Just about every measurable aspect of the quality of life has flourished from the miracle. Consider just one story from our recent past. In 1924, the son of President Calvin Coolidge got a blister on his foot while playing tennis on the White House lawn. It got infected, and within a week, he died. And that was the president's son. We've come a long way since then. Today, drugs as commonplace as penicillin can wipe away infections that once killed Calvin Coolidge Jr. But what about the problems that still plague us today? Can't things improve? Sure, of course they can. We can get richer, we can solve many of these public policy problems that plague us, but we can't improve upon the miracle's core assumptions. For virtually all our history, humans lived in small groups. Politics, religion, and economics were all personal and tribal, defined by the group. Humans have a strong coalition instinct that helps us forge alliances based on loyalty and reciprocity. Every anti-capitalist political ideology believes that society should be like a family, a tribe, a small community where everyone knows each other and works together. Identity politics is just a subset of this worldview. It says, my tribe deserves more than your tribe. The miracle of the modern world requires us to hold our tribalism in check. Think of it this way. Capitalism isn't natural. Democracy isn't natural. Human rights aren't natural. The only things that give these institutions and ideas lasting power is our commitment to them. Nothing prevents us from walking away except our own refusal to do so. Without effort, civilization dies, because that is what civilization is, effort. That task isn't over, the work isn't done, and it never will be. And anyone who wants to improve upon the principles that made the miracle possible isn't actually interested in progress. Calvin Coolidge never got to see the technological marvels that we have today, 
but he understood that the principles that made the miracle possible were timeless. If anyone wishes to deny their truth or their soundness, the only direction in which he can proceed historically is not forward, but backward, toward the time when there was no equality, no rights of the individual, no rule of the people. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about my argument in my book, Suicide of the West, visit jonahgoldberg.com. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like AI scholars to cover on Rethink Tank, and be sure to subscribe for more videos and research from AEI.